Good morning, y'all. I am Ben with Whitetail Hollow Farm. It's a little bit bright where I'm standing right now, but behind me, if you can see it up there, is our weather stem weather station. And you might see what I'm wearing. I got a long sleeve t-shirt on. It is 62, let's see if I can get it on camera, there you go, 62 degrees right now according to our weather sim weather station here on the farm. Y'all can look this up. If you go to Facebook, the easiest way to get to it is just uh, go to Whitetail Hollow Farms Weather Stem and follow us and like us on Facebook. That's the best way to find us on there and you can see what the weather's like here on the farm. Hi mom, what are you doing? You just wandering around enjoying the cold weather, beautiful weather. Are you cold? It's kind of, yeah, it is pretty warm in the sun. Mom's not a fan of cold weather. It's fixing to burn. It's fixing to burn because the wind's finally kind of gone down, hasn't it? It's been very windy here the past few days, I'd say. So we're finally got nice weather to work on the gardens and we're going to get the piggies out of here and the garden's all set up for, for spring, right? So I'm back in the house now. Ignore the mess in here. It's kind of a looks like a tornado went through or something, but we've just been pretty busy again trying to keep outside and do as much as we can while the weather's kind of nice. So back in though, and I figured I'd show you all what the nice folks at UF IFIS, IFIS, IFIS. Um, can't remember what it actually stands for, but it's our local county extension office and what the fine folks there got us. We went there the other night. We were invited to the Cattlemen's Association meeting that was held up there at the brand new building. And uh, we're good friends with quite a few people up there and they gave us a wildlife and pollinator trial mix to mess around with. So we've got some ball clover. We've got... Another type of clover, oh, arrow leaf clover, white clover, red clover, Dixie crimson clover, which we've already planted before and it does really well, purple top turnips, winter pea, which we've done before, it also does pretty well, some vetch, I'm excited to see how that turns out, um, trophy radish. Some Rackmaster Choice Chicory and two different blends for pollinators. What? Are you talking? Hi, Simon. Do you like all those mixes? Hmm? So anyways, a big thanks to Miss Ann Blunt and uh, Robbie Jones at the University of Florida IFAS Gadsden County Extension. I think Miss Ann is who did all the seed formulations and decided to pick us this year. We've known Miss Ann for many, many years. Wonderful lady. She works out at the research farm and I believe she's also a professor with the university. So big, big thanks to them. We're excited to try all these different uh, mixes and different varieties of... Uh, all sorts of fun stuff. From what I understand, we were one of the very few farms that was selected to do this this year. So pretty honored to be able to have the opportunity to trial some of this stuff on our farm. So my truck is down right now. So I've been getting around everywhere on the four wheeler. And I figured I'd give you all a little update on what we got going on this week around the farm. So you're gonna have to ignore the four wheeler running in the background here. I just don't want to get stranded out here and have to walk back to the house because I don't know if it's going to start back up a little cold for the four-wheeler today. Used to 90 degree Florida weather. Oh, that is a uh, that is a banana spider right there. Y'all probably can't see the webbing, but I stopped right before I got to it. There's another spider right there. Glad I didn't run into that. Banana spider web is not fun. So, I'll back up here. Behind me, you can see cleared back into the woods here is a pretty nice little spot. So we've got a new building that we ordered, gosh, probably six months ago, four, four, six months ago, a while back, we ordered a new building to go here. Um, probably just gonna use it for storage for a little bit. And then I think we have some other plans for it, but right now it's just a storage shed and we're gonna leave it at that. It's gonna be an agricultural building to store feed in. So, um, some of you might know what's going on with this building, um, but right now it's just a feed room. So it is a, uh, a perfectly legit feed room. We'll leave it at that. So this building is 12 foot wide by 32.
two foot long, I believe. It's got a 16 foot loft in it. Oh, I'm probably wrong on all of it, but uh, it's a pretty big building that's gonna go right here. We're clearing all the underbrush out of the woods here because it doesn't serve us any purpose it's so thick that the goats can't get in here and uh, we've had entire trees fall in here so there's a few pretty nice looking live oak up in here and we want to help try and preserve those and help those grow so we're going to get rid of all the underbrush throughout the this entire little block of woods here and uh, the building's going to go right there i believe this was the best spot that we found for it so i mean this already looked great to me we got to get in here with a root rake and get rid of some of the smaller sticks but so anyways this is where we're going to put our new feed storage building so probably going to get in here for a little while today and maybe work on it we'll see nice weather to be out here working on this so let's see if i can get under this banana spider web without getting caught up in it yep we made it so there's actually a little road that runs through here right now and there's our front driveway and the road way up there so we didn't want to get rid of this road right here but that's obviously not going to be quite big enough to get a truck with a big building in on so we cleared this right here so they can back it straight in we're going to clear some more off to this side so we're not going to get rid of any big trees right now all the large trees are staying anything bigger than about four to six inches is uh is going to stay so anything smaller it's going to go when you get further in back here you can actually this is some stuff that i haven't pulled out of here yet that i cut down but you can see what i'm talking about there's a nice big live oak tree right there that's trying to come up and uh, we're probably going to get rid of most of the uh, most of the water oaks at some point, or red oak. These trees right here, the tall oaks right there, those are water oaks, red oak, and they tend to rot out after a little bit and uh, cause a lot of damage. There was one right here that fell over and crushed a bunch of debris in the woods so had to get it out anyways that might be a project we work on today we'll see probably not in this video the idea for this video is just to kind of do an update and the projects will be in separate videos for the rest of the week i like doing these little update videos because a lot of people get bored of actually watching me work on projects i mean mom especially gets bored of it she already told me that she won't sit there and watch me work on the tractor for 15 minutes straight so I mean, I don't blame her. A lot of people don't do that. I do. I love to sit there and watch people work on projects without uh, without stopping in a video. But these update videos are fun too. Some of y'all that came out to the farm tour may have seen this. This is our relatively brand new 2021 Circle W 16 foot livestock bumper pole trailer yeah mouthful but that's what it is we bought this thing two days before the farm tour a day no, yeah two days before the farm tour um our ag agent came out and we told him hey we don't like our little horse trailer for moving the big cattle and stuff it just doesn't work at all the pigs that we moved up to butcher recently were trying to climb over the back gate it's just not practical so we decided to get an actual livestock trailer and right now everybody knows shortages everywhere for everything and there was no inventory on any lots well he ran across a guy who had this parked on the side of the road fantastic deal i mean we paid full retail for it basically because they're so hard to find and this thing's practically brand new the guy used it once so it it is it's basically brand new we weren't paying anything less than we would have paid at a, a dealer because we would have had to pay dealer fees and whatnot if you look up the prices of these trailers online i'm not gonna go into the financials of it but if you look up the prices of these trailers they're really good price i mean they're they're not your fifteen thousand dollar livestock trailers but they're built really well they so far i mean it's brand new we'll see how time will tell but it's it looks to be holding up really well it was a deal that we couldn't pass up because we went and talked to a couple of uh, dealers and nobody could seem to get us uh, any pricing on one and they didn't know when they'd have any on the lot and i can't do a fifth wheel with my truck my truck's weight capacity is 6200 pounds so this thing with a couple of steers in the back is going to be about as much as i could do anyways so we wanted a bumper pull and we didn't need a tack room or anything like that i'll let y'all see the inside so the guy that we bought it from, he ordered it in March, got it in June, 
used it once to move some calves in. He was brand new to farming and decided that him and his wife and kids did not want to farm. So they stuck it back out at the side of the road and they didn't even wash the thing out before they, uh, they sold it. So I came in here and pressure washed it out same day away from everybody because we don't want any of the contaminants from his calves get into any of our animals. But the downside to him not cleaning this thing out immediately is you can see it's pretty much stained the, uh, the entire metal siding here. That sucks, but what we're gonna try and do is go in with a Dolby pad and some uh, hardcore good soaps um, nothing toxic and get this thing cleaned up. I'm also going to be offering a livestock moving service. So if anybody's got livestock that they want moved, get in touch with us. I, I'm trying to keep it within like a two hour radius of here and I'm more than willing to move animals from point A to point B. Um, nothing too silly like move my one goat or move my two goats. Stuff like that should be done in the back of a pickup truck with cages to be brutally honest. It would be well more than you'd want to spend to have me take this massive trailer just to move two little goats. Something like this is for moving two steers or um, a cow or something like that. A couple of features that we liked on this trailer and the main reasons we went with it was A, it was exactly what we were looking for and B, it has that door over there. It's got the side door, which is nice, the escape door. And it's also got a separation gate. So you can get one animal up in the front of the trailer and uh, lock them in, basically. I'm not gonna lock it because then I'd have to go back out and unlock it. But we can lock somebody in the front and then load another animal in the back and not have to worry about somebody getting out. So that's a really nice feature. Other trailer had nothing like that. Wasn't even big enough for a separation gate. Um, the back door, uh, I had, I'd have to get to the outside to do it, but this is a sliding door. This small panel right here slides open, or you can take the entire door and swing it off to the left. It's got a couple of really nice features. Nothing too particularly fancy, but stuff that we really wanted and needed on a trailer. It's also got electric trailer brakes on it, which is one of the reasons why my truck is down right now. I can close this door with one hand, but it's got an electric trailer brake system on it. It's also got a breakaway system, so the brakes will come on as soon as it gets cut away from the truck if we're in motion. That way, the trailer doesn't keep rolling down the road if something were to happen and it got disconnected from the truck. But my truck is down right now because I got something going on with my brake. I don't know what it is. We replaced the master cylinder, bled the ABS system by hand manually, just ordered a scanner to try and do it myself. I went to a shop and they quoted me like, $800. Insane to me for something that should not be that difficult. I had brand new pads and brand new shoes put on two years ago and a buddy and me went and pulled all that off looked at them brand new looking so the master cylinder's a 30 dollar part on amazon the pedal's really soft it's mushy that's my problem it's not firm it's mushy i can push it basically to the floor so we replaced the master cylinder which the shop was going to charge me like 800 dollars for for a 30 dollar part so i said no way uh anyways we've messed with it a ton don't really know what's going on so i ordered a scanner tool and i'm going to automatically bleed the ABS system with the scanner and see if maybe that'll work. If it doesn't, we might just put yet another master cylinder on it. Might be another bad master cylinder. Crappy GM parts. Go figure. So yeah, once we get the brakes figured out, we're going to be offering a livestock hauling service with this thing. We'll move your animals from farm to farm, move them to the butcher. Whatever you're trying to do, we'll help you out. Anything within about two hours of Havana, Florida, we're pretty much willing to do. Cost a lot of money to move this thing. I had a lady who wanted me to move two goats out of Atlanta over to like Rome or somewhere like that. And I'm like, uh, about a 700 mile round trip for me. And with the prices of gas and everything right now, I don't think you're gonna like the quote on that. You might wanna just put them in the back of a pickup truck with a cage. That sounds like a better option. Anything serious, we're willing to help y'all out with. Once we get it figured out and we're up and running, uh, I'm going to get our steers loaded up, Toodles and Sirloin, and they're both going to the butcher. They're both well past needing to be done but we haven't been able to load them up with the old trailer so now we finally got the right tool for the job the last item on our agenda today is it's time to plant cool season forages so i'm out here in our main hay field just north of the farm on the property that we manage up here where i cut most of my hay well all of my hay right now we can't graze our animals on this land because we don't own it and it's not exactly right next to the farm it's a little ways down the road so we uh we cut it for hay and 
instead and that's a good alternative for us if we had the opportunity to graze it we would because we believe much more in grazing so and that's the way we're trying to go with things but for now it's going to continue to be hay field we had a major weed issue this year the sand spurs came in and we had no choice but to cut the the fields because we needed hay i mean plain and simple we needed hay and yes that spread the sand spurs and it just it was a big mess there's some bahia grass in here but the rest of it has just been weeds and sand spurs and it's just been a big mess so we're starting from scratch yet again we don't like to use chemicals it's just not our deal not our thing we don't use chemicals um, unless they're omri organic certified or um, at least some sort of clean herbicide of some sort that doesn't have any glyphosates or cancer causing anything in it that's just kind of our regenerative mo around here natural mo i guess you could say as well so we fight with tillage that's our our answer for fighting weeds usually and a lot of people will argue with me and say that tillage will bring up new weed seeds and i won't debate that fact they're entirely right tillage is not great causes soil erosion rips up your micronutrients and your organic matter and everything that creates your soil but when we need to start fresh and we can't use chemicals then tillage is the next best option so we're gonna come in here probably today probably what i'm gonna work on because we've gotten our last cutting of hay off this year not gonna be any more growth didn't get a whole lot of growth off this last one anyways but we buzz cut it to the ground as well as we could when we cut it three four days ago got what we could off of it and now we're going to go ahead and till it up and we're gonna plant a cool season forage mix in here which i'm gonna go show you all now got seed most farmers have a lot more seed than this stored but this is our little mountain you're worth looking at about twelve hundred dollars worth of seed right here it was very expensive this year so kind of cuts fertilizer almost out of the equation well we are going to be using compost for our fertilizer this year uh, i don't think we're even going to put any compost on at the moment that might be a later down the road thing but right now our soil samples look pretty good we put fertilizer on last spring and everything looks pretty good right now had good growth this year so we're going to go without fertilizer this time around a lot of people waste money on fertilizer they don't take soil samples they don't see what their soil looks like and make sure that they don't really need something so a lot of people waste and we don't like to waste money like that so no fertilizer this time around so our natural fertilizer that we're going to be using if i can find some in here this is also kind of a storage unit area so it's kind of a mess in here so here's actually two of them right next to each other so these are going to be our nitrogen fixers this year it says columbia green on it but this is there we go austrian winter pea right there one of the samples that we got is actually austrian winter pea so austrian winter pea it's great uh, erosion control weed control and uh awesome nitrogen fertilizer fixer and we've also got some crimson clover seed which pretty much well besides the weed control crimson clover does a great job of nitrogen fixing as well this year the uh the winter pea i believe was like 36 a bag and the crimson clover was like 75 a bag we got buck forage oat to go in the mix as well as cereal rye florida 401 variety we've got some annual gulf rye grass here and to finish it off we got some ram forage oats so we're going to kind of conduct an experiment this year we talked with miss ann the other night and said yeah we got our buck forage oats because that's what we've always done in the past for food plots it's made great hay as well we just have trusted the buck forage variety which is about 35 dollars a bag this year and she said go with the ram variety it's way better for what you're trying to do and it actually has more growth than the buck forage and the deer don't care at all about the difference and the ram variety is 23.50 a bag it's significantly cheaper for a better product is essentially what we were given and told we had already bought our buck forage oats by that point but we swung by a seed store and picked up some of the ram we picked up four bags of it we're gonna plant three two three bags in the cow's pasture out back see how they like it we'll partition 
fishing that an area off to see if they'll grow back there under the pine um which they should all right we'll see and i'm also going to put a bag or two in uh in one of my fields and have it right next to the buck forage variety and compare the two she basically told us that the buck forage variety is more expensive because it's got a big deer on the front and the hunters go wow big deer it'll grow big deer so it's a, a marketing gimmick from what we were told compared to the ram variety which is marketed towards cattle producers so but that's our mix this year i've also got some other odd little mixes down there those are going in deer food plot that may or may not be cut for hay we'll see i think the camo bag down there is like a three-way mix with some wheat and stuff in it so but that's our mix this year we're gonna have one more time we'll have oats which is our main commodity uh we'll have cereal rye which is our second Second main commodity we'll do 50 pounds to the acre of each of those we've got a bag of crimson clover 15 pounds to the acre of that um we've got the austrian winter pea which i think i'm probably gonna do about 25 pounds to the acre we'll see that's the one thing that i added in from the recommendations this year on ifas's website that they didn't have on there i wanted a second nitrogen fixer and something to do some weed suppression so i added in the winter pea we'll see how it holds up and we've got the uh uh, the annual ryegrass which is probably going to be i don't know about 15 20 pounds to the acre as well so we've got eight acres to do i gotta sit down and do all the math i have to custom blend all this which is going to be fun i'll get out here with a scale um i think we've got a cement mixer lying around i'll dump some seed into the cement mixer to mix it all up and get it into five gallon buckets we'll rent the grain drill from the extension bring it back here and dump it into the grain drill and go plant so but the first steps get tillage done so that we can go out and do that if i do a good enough job on the tillage this year the whole is to be able to do no-till this spring if the fields look good they're nice and smooth after we cut the second cutting of hay off it which should be around april or may temperature should be warming back up and we should be able to just no-till drill in a summer mix with no issues so we'll see how that works out we're going to start kind of prepping for that as soon as we're done with this and get some seed ordered uh, because it's been a struggle to get seed this year and it was very very expensive as i said before sometimes if you order ahead of time you get like a pre-order in you can get better pricing they, they can lock you in so that's our deal with seed i think that's all like the major updates that we've got going on it, things have slowed down after the farm tour which is a great thing it gives us time to work on stuff so we're, we're just kind of working at one project at a time plugging along and we've got more stuff planned for in the future as far as events goes so keep an eye on us we got other things in the works and uh, we appreciate y'all watching be sure to like this video leave a comment down below follow us on social media if you don't already and thanks for watching everybody Oh, hey, you're still here. So real quick, one last little thing for those of you who stuck around and are interested in it. I didn't want to blast it in the middle of the regular video because it's not that important. My uh, 1986 Vicon RP1210 is for sale. So if you'd like to pick up this magnificent piece of machinery, I'm asking uh, 3K for it or best offer, whatever you think you can afford. I'm willing to accept offers. So really quick, a little bit about this baler. The problems with it, we'll start right off. I want to be real honest about this sort of stuff it needs some pickup teeth you look in here there's some pickup teeth that are broken off like this one right here is gone and once you get to the bottom side there's a couple missing right here those should not be hard to replace i've actually got like five or six pickup teeth that you can have that'll come with the baler it does have a bearing going out on it i don't know where um it just recently started making a very loud squealing sound when you start up the baler it runs it worked i mean it, it there's no real issues with it at the moment as far as it running but it's going to need a bearing very soon i can help you with the parts manual on it but i don't really know how to diagnose where that bearing's coming from apart from getting off the tractor while it's running and listening and looking for it if i had to guess it's probably one of the roller bearings up top here one of these shouldn't be very hard to replace looks like you just got to take some chains off in an assembly shouldn't be the end of the world those bearings you can get universal on amazon for fairly cheap so i wouldn't call that a very big deal those are the only two real problems with this thing i just did a bunch of work to it but i want to upgrade for this next season because i've had some opportunities 
opportunity just to cut some other people's hay. And this thing is older. It's a great, perfect baler for somebody who wants to go out and bale 10 bales um, every couple of weeks or once a month or whatever. It's great for that. But for me going out and doing 50, 60 bales at a time, it's a little bit stressful to work with because it is old. It has breakdowns from time to time. So it's not the best for any sort of commercial level. Use. It does have the brand new hydraulic gauge that I just installed. Some brand new hydraulic hoses back there. Um, I keep it well greased, well maintained. Um, just cleaned it off recently. There's just a little bit of loose hay left here and there, but otherwise I knocked most of the other loose stuff off it so that's what you're looking at um if you'd like to come look at it or have any questions about it feel free to send us an email dm us on facebook however you want to get in touch with us leave a comment down below i'll give you some other options but uh yeah 3k or a best offer that's what we're asking for any questions just contact thanks for watching